if you're not uncomfortable, you can live a life of comfort and it just take you far away from what God desires for your heart. Or you can pursue those moments of being uncomfortable and leaning into what he actually has for you because that's where the growth happens. Hey y'all, welcome, welcome, and welcome to Circle Time for the Soul. My name is Diana Marie, and let me just say, I am so glad you're here. Whether it's your first episode, your 16th episode, you all the way in. Listen, I'm not just glad that you're here. I'm glad that God has woken you up another day to live out the purpose that he's planted inside you from the start. So y'all, y'all might be like, Diana, you sound a little different. Girl's been fighting a cold for the past few days, but fighting it, okay? We we zinking it up, <laughs> we taking the vitamin C. So the hair's up because we got some work to do, okay? No cold's gonna keep us from because the show must go on, all right? So let's jump into today. We got a few things coming up this week I'm really excited about. Uh, we have, first of all, we're finishing our book today. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot that goes with that, but we are finishing up. It is what you make of it. This week, our devotional, God's Dream for Your Life, is also coming to an end. But with an end comes new beginnings. So I'm excited to share with you what is to come. So throughout the week, I'll give you some ideas of what is on the horizon. But one thing I do want to share down below, you will have the link to our next upcoming book, and it's Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. So we get to hang with Pastor Rick for a few more weeks. He actually is the author of our devotional for this month. Uh, and so if you'd like to follow along within your own time, your own reading time, your own quiet time, as we journey through that together, I do encourage you to grab your own copy so that you're able to highlight, y'all, mine is highlighted up, uh, and just gives you a space to really process for yourself before we join here together. It's not mandatory. I will be reading directly from the copy that I have to give you the highlights that I have each week. Uh, so that's going to be something new and exciting. And our devotional coming up is going to be Trusting God, which is going to be by Joyce Meyer. And I'm really excited about that one as well because I'm currently journeying through that. And many people are like, how do I know? How do I trust God? And this is going to give us the tools each day on how to do so. So uh, again, we will be journeying through Purpose Driven Life each week. It won't be a daily thing anymore. I wanted to, I got some feedback. I wanted to give you all time to read, time to process uh, what is being shared in here. Uh, but there's going to be a ton of resources that go along with that book. So I'm excited for that to be part of our circle time. One more thing I wanted to start getting us on the ball is going to be our show and tell. I'm super excited about this because I don't know if y'all remember Circle Time, but that was one of the favorite days. Like, what are they about to come in with? What are they about to tell us? And I gave us a little sneak peek of that in last week's Thursday episode where I talked about that incredible um, gentleman who was giving each and every week. Like, that's an example of these show and tells. Now, I'd, of course, love to hear for you from you this is a community that we're building so i'd love to hear your heart like what is god showing and telling you in this season of your life it doesn't have to be something like you don't have to think oh well it's not like the big huge testimony like i'm very far from that because i believe that there are testimonies happening every day within our lives like every day there's a testimony of god's love and how he's taking care of you so I'm going to put the email right here so that you are able to have it. It will also be in our show notes. So if you have a story that you'd like to show and you'd like to tell, that is going to encourage, motivate, and inspire somebody else. Even if you don't think it does. Like, you never know. And remember, well, yeah, let me not jump ahead. But in Purpose Driven Life, we're going to touch on that. On how your life experiences are meant not just for you, but how you use that in the world and how you inspire others to walk out their purpose. So... Let's get into it. Y'all, today's thought, buckle up, buttercup. It's time. Today's thought 
is so powerful. So like I told you before, I actually have been using this journal, Daily Kairos, for quite some time now, and I love these journals. I love that it has a daily portion for your memory verse, your gratitude, prayers to God, an affirmation, and then what you're reading biblically. So also within each page, they have a quote for each day. And y'all, the quote for this one? All right, now I had heard of Francis Chan before. I don't know if you have. He's a pastor and author of some incredible books. They had a quote by him and it was, our greatest fear should not be of failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. What? Let me read that one more time. Our greatest fear should not be of failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. Y'all, let me tell you, like this one spoke to my soul because this has been the prayer of my heart through this season. Many of you might not know, I'm a business owner. I actually am a piano teacher by trade. I left my job back in 2020 where I was teaching uh, full-time at a high school. I decided to step back from that and pursue my business full time. Now in the midst of that, it was doing very well, but at this moment, it's now like, it's, it's stepped back a bit. And I've been like, all right, God, like I've always known that God has put other things on my heart in the midst of teaching piano. Now teaching piano, I love it. I adore my students and families. I have such an awesome time. However, it came a point when I was like, you know what? I'm not here to teach y'all piano. Like my heart is to just make sure that y'all leave better people. And I started to have to figure out what is it that God wants me to be really focusing my time and energy on. If you're like me, you just have so many things that you love and enjoy to do. And I've found that that it's like you could be mediocre at a, at a whole bunch of things or great at one thing. I'm not really sure where you stand in that. That'd be interesting conversation for another day. But this whole idea of I don't want to fail by not pursuing what God has placed me here on this earth to actually do. And, you know, I think the it's the war between actually financially making it, like being able to financially take care of myself and pursue it. But man, like God ain't worried about all that stuff. Like the stuff, God is not worried about your finances. He's not, cause he know like, he knows that he's gonna provide for you. It might not look how we expect it to look from day to day, but he's going to provide. It might be uncomfortable, but something I heard this week was, if you're not uncomfortable, like you can live a life of comfort and it just be take you far away from what God's desires for your heart, or you can pursue those moments of being uncomfortable and leaning into what he actually has for you because that's where the growth happens, right? If you're working out, lifting weights and things like that it's, it could be it gets uncomfortable the heavier the weight gets but those are the times when the muscles are growing and we talked about this a few episodes back about how faith is a muscle so as we put ourselves in these positions to grow and become more uncomfortable we're becoming stronger in our faith of who not just we are but what our god is capable of doing in and through us so let's start focusing our energies on the things that do matter. But it's not what matters to us and what matters to the world, but it's realizing what is mattering to God's heart. Break my heart, God, for what breaks yours. What is your stance on situations? Where, where do you want me to be a light in this world? All right, y'all, let's get into our memory verse for this week. This week's memory verse comes from Ephesians. That's one of my favorite books, y'all, because Ephesians 3.20 is my life verse. But we'll get into that one another time. For this week, we have Ephesians 2.10, and it goes, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Oof. Just that, man. These verses, I feel like, are always tied into a promise. Like, God has stuff for you in advance. So let's just get that in our soul. Remember, our Monday goal is simply to write it down somewhere. Keep it as a wallpaper on your phone, um, on your desktop, on your laptop, somewhere you could put it in your car, in the dashboard. 
get those memory verses. Remember, we had that example last week. I'll put it here again this week. One of our beautiful members of our community had actually sent this to me to see just how she's reading along and keeping up with her memory verse right there on the fridge because we all visit in the fridge this week, all right? So check it out. Do what you need to do. Let's get this one in our spirit this week. All right. On to our devotional, y'all, day 16. There's only 19, so we are finishing this devotional on Thursday. God is in control even when your plans stall. So let me just start by reading how he starts this out. There are certain dead-end words in life, including cancer, divorce, bankruptcy, infertility, and unemployment. How do you know when you're at a dead end? You know it when things get out of your control and you can't do anything about it. When you're stuck in phase five and you're waiting for deliverance, remember that's the sixth phase, you need to remember what God can do. The situation may be out of your control, but it's not out of God's control. When you face a dead end, don't focus on what you can't do. Focus instead on what God can do. Y'all, I have to share something that's on my heart today. Um, it's going to be a very abridged version of what happened back in 2020. So back in 2020, I have a fur baby, y'all. My heart, <laughs> my girl, and my dog. Okay, my dog. And she, I found out back in 2020 that she actually had a mass on her liver. Now she was having incontinence and all these things. And again, that was the grace of God that a veterinarian that she didn't normally see requested her to have an x-ray. So they had the x-ray, found the mass. She was getting an ultrasound the next day. I had quotes for surgery the day after that. But here was the thing, like hearing that word because the word cancer was being thrown around like like it was free. Like I was just like, whoa, do we know this for sure? Like, But even though I was questioning it, that word was that dead. Like that was, that is, y'all, that word broke me. I'm not gonna lie. I was on the floor. Like, I lost my faith at that moment. And it wasn't until my community of faith-filled women in my life gathered around me and they were like, no, we're not accepting this, nor are we accepting your response to this. Like, rise up, woman of God. And I'm so thankful uh, for the, the just the women of faith that surrounded me in that season and reminded me of whose I am. And... You know, it was crazy because friends were praying over me, praying over my dog. Like, it was just this moment of faith. And it wasn't, again, I was having this finite mentality as to how the story would end. I didn't give it to God and say, God, do with this what you can, what only you can do. And within that season, I, I, I'm going to do this without crying. But within that season, I was able to truly see God's hand in my life for not just the first time, but God, God has been in your girl's life many a times. And when I saw the, heard that word, and then when I heard the amount of money that it was going to cost for the surgery, I was like, there is no way, like I give up. What is there to be done? And I started to share. Oftentimes when we're going through things, we might feel like retreating. You know my, you know my Homer Simpson, I'll be back in the bushes until things are worked out and then I'll be back. And it was when I started to share my heart and somebody had, first of all, somebody led me to another surgeon that was outside of the city that I was in. And then somebody else was like, why don't we do a GoFundMe? Or I don't know how the GoFundMe came about. But I ended up doing a GoFundMe because there was no way that I could raise the amount of money that the surgery was going to cost. And within three days, because of the incredible community that I prayed for in high school, I prayed for good friends and community when I was around 16 and 17, God delivered. He delivered in those three days, like strangers, just threw money at this GoFundMe and helped raise enough that was needed for that moment for the surgery. And I would have never imagined, when I got that news, I didn't see that GoFundMe. When I got that news, I didn't see the other surgeon in another city, but God did. And that's what, man, I get chills because 
God was like, just let me handle your story, Diana. Like, I care about you so much more than what is happening right now. Like, I care about you so much that I'm going to handle this in advance. And so, y'all, I thought I wouldn't cry, but that's why, that's, a, that's, I'll share the details of that story another time, but being able to see that when it's out of your control and you finally surrender to God, like that's when he could finally say, okay, my child, now let me show you what I can do. And so let me just end by reading how he ends this part. Uh, he said, it, like, it's not about positive thinking. Positive thinking is not faith. They are two very think different things. Positive thinking works fine in situations you have control over. But in situations that are out of your control, positive thinking is worthless. It's just wishful thinking. It doesn't change the situation. When you face things that are out of your control, you need something more than a positive mental attitude. You need faith in God because he can control it when you can't. Most of life is beyond your control. So you need faith far more than you need positive thinking. And I'll end with what he quotes from Luke 18, 27. What is impossible with man is possible with God. God specializes in the impossible. It's called a miracle and he can do it in your life. He is ready to turn your dead end into deliverance. And let me just say this, that when they went in for that surgery, it was not cancer. God wants to navigate your story for you. Just give him, give him the wheel, y'all. Give him the wheel. Book time, book time. <laughs> All right, y'all, book time. I know that's coming out of a real serious moment, uh, but I hope that encourages somebody's heart today from our devotional because I know every story doesn't end the same. I know that that was a blessing that God put upon our lives at that season. But I really do believe that he is in the business of miracles, but we're part of those miracles also, right? So in that story that I shared, it was so many people that were part of that miracle. And I think that's so fitting for the final word from it is what you make of it. So he ends with this, all of which to say, I really do believe the future depends on you and what you make out of what you're given. I think households become homes because of your love and attention, that businesses and churches become movements with your energy and your talents. I believe wholeheartedly that applied energy and focus can literally set, correct, and reset the trajectory of another human life. And it does tie into my story from our devotional because guess what? God used people in my story. As much of a miracle I know was God, he gave people like there were people in my life who were posting and posting that GoFundMe and reposting it there are people who were like I was just waiting to see like what the ends look like so I could fill it up at the end uh, there were other people who were driving over to me to drive the long distances and 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 make sure I was not alone in that season and there were people who prayed like came and laid hands like it was the people it was the people who made my story and made the miracle and made the impossible impossible. Like God used those people in the life. That person who saw my post and was like, hey, I went through this also. Those life experiences, they went through it. But let me share a surgeon that I loved that really just, so yeah. I, I, I wanted to just continue that thought because at the end, I'm just going to share one more passage. I think you're what's next. And I wrote this book to help you become every inch the person you can be now that it's your turn. Like God wants to use you. Your purpose is very, very, very much so valuable to this world and needed. And it's sometimes it's going to just take a step of faith. 
It's going to take leaning into what might seemingly be impossible, but handing over that control to God. So here we go at the end. That story that changed your life, that blog entry that woke you up, that meal that seemed to stop time while you ate it, that household you wished was yours, that character whose journey was your journey. None of that sprung from nothingness. All of those good works were created, refined, edited, remixed, stirred, and served by human hands who took a risk to believe that it was their turn, even if for just that day or hour or moment. But that effort moved you and changed you, becoming part of who you are now. See, while you were born in certain places into certain circumstances with certain parents and obstacles and opportunities, you will not be remembered for where you were born or what you were given to, or what was given to you, or even what was taken away. You will be remembered for what you did with what you had. Amen to that. Like we are so, what a blessing to know that no matter what the circumstances are, what you make of it is so much more important. And I'll end on this note. I think you're what's next. Get ready for that. Ooh, y'all. And I love it because it's a perfect segue into purpose-driven life. What I am earth am I here for? That's the subtitle. So let's do this. Y'all, what an episode today. Like, if you made it to the end, let's go. <laughs> uh, but... Please be sure to like and subscribe uh, so that you are notified of the upcoming episodes. They're released daily at 9 a.m. Okay, I was seeing, I'm trying to work with y'all, see what works best for you. Uh, but let me go ahead and pray you out. Thank you, God, for each and every one of the beautiful, beautiful souls that you have here today. I pray that you bless them and keep them and provide for them and comfort them and journey alongside them, God, as they walk through whatever it is they're walking through this week. I pray that you just uplift them and give them a week, God, where they're able to see your hand at work, seeing the impossible become possible. In Jesus' name, amen. See y'all tomorrow.